Oh, hello. Would you like to hear something really, really stupid? Well, you're in luck. You've come to the right place. It's Oon! Poco Moss, we not only are going to give you a little bit more today, but that is going to be a very, very stupid uh, nugget of information we're going to open things up with. Uh, guys, it is Tuesday, 10 10 23. It is almost uh, 5 p.m. out here in uh, beautiful California, um, as Governor Schwarzenegger used to say, California. Um, it's uh, almost the end of uh, the post-market trading, and of course, we are going to talk SoFi technologies. SoFi, before I get into something really, really stupid, um, it was a double hump, double hump day. We had a, a mountain and a sell-off, and then another run-up, and then just a little bit of a slow bleed, but the stock uh, traded everywhere from $8.21 to $8.53. Um Guys, I just want to point something out that may seem uh, super stupid, but um, everything around the SoFi stock is stupid. How the mechanics, you know, just push the stock up and down, these illogical moves for absolutely no reason. Um, you know, you've had a lot of turmoil. You've had a lot of geopolitical stuff happening, obviously. Um, you know, everything going on in Israel, uh, Gaza Strip, uh Seems to be, you know, right now that war is contained uh, to that area, the conflict, but, you know, could always open up to the north. Um, they have the West Bank locked down, but anything can happen, guys. I mean, Iran is pulling the strings um, in the region. So you'd think like, you know, SoFi is a growth stock, it's not profitable, it would sell off. Um, but in fact, SoFi has gone from 717 just last Wednesday, October 4th. Um, and it touched $8.53 today. So that's like a 20% increase, guys, in a week for really no reason. And and that's really the beauty of the SoFi stock over the last uh, couple of years is it's just been market makers have had the stock on a string. They've manipulated the stock up and down these very rapid, somewhat uh, illogical movements. And it's all to bilk money out of the retail investor. They take, you know, premium for options. They, you know, get you to buy on uh, FOMO near the top and panic sell uh, near the lows. And so it doesn't have to be dramatic lows. It could just be a swing of a dollar. But think about it, guys. I mean, they just did their famous uh, shakeout pattern, um, which is here. And you think, well, why would they do this, guys? You see an extremely dramatic sell-off. Um, from 867 down to, um, you know, I don't know where that is, $7.40 all in five days. Okay, so that just happened, guys, like toward the end of September. It's only a couple of weeks ago. And then you, you think, okay, look at this giant red candle, guys. I mean, it's just absolute carnage, absolute bloodbath, much bigger volume at $39 million. And then it starts to bottom out and starts to recover. So, you know... The very brave people might start to buy in here. Um, and then they give you the old double pump. Um, so people who didn't sell here, they might be, okay, it's the bottom. It's going to do a V-shaped recovery. No. Then they absolutely nail it again with another giant red candle. Gap down, giant red candle. So now you're all the way down to $7.17. Um their people are just giving up. If if you didn't give up here and you were going to give up, you're going to give up and get out here. The the fear, um, the panic selling is alive and well, and then it comes up and we repeat the cycle. And if you remember, guys, you know, previously I talked about this pattern um, that we saw almost exactly. I know these charts from here to here and from here to here visually don't look the same to you because you don't know what to look for and you're not looking at the volume. Like, look at the volume on the run-up and then in the middle on the pump, the volume completely dies. Um, and then it just, this massive pump comes in here again with all this green volume um, accumulation. And then they actually started shorting the stock in here um, very, very foolishly. Um but in any case, guys, this pattern is repeated almost exactly. Ran up for 30 days, um, did this sort of elaborate um, sideways and down pattern punctuated by this 
um, double bottom here, very severe double bottom, one giant sell off, um, a little fake uh, run up, bounce off the bottom, little dead cap bounce, and then just an extreme sell off. And look at this giant gap down. Um, on that last red candle, you see the stock start to recover at sort of a moderate, um, but uh, healthy, uh, you know, increase over the, the similar period of time, guys. And then the stock just absolutely explodes to the upside. That period of time from the bottom, uh, 515, um, it sets up for about 10 days there, guys. So, you know, you're talking about bottoming 10-3 um, it's been about seven days, so I think a couple more days and this stock could absolutely explode, guys. Where are we going to be coming into the earnings report? I think there's two scenarios. Unless, you know, Anthony Noto craps his pants during one of those windbreaker golf course talks he's uh, want to give, you know, where he says EBITDA and right to win and, you know, talks about how proud he is of the, uh, you know, consecutive quarters of record revenue and just, you know, that script, that old, that old Noto uh, mantra he lays out, which is just the roadmap and, you know, I mean, God bless the guy, but unless something crazy happens, we're going to see massive deposit growth. We're going to see solid membership growth. The stock was sitting, guys, $6.50 coming into the Chia Pet uh, short attack. It was sitting at $9.50 coming into the last ER where they did that massive uh, pump and dump. Um and then, guys, I think it's going to be sitting high. Honest to God, I think it's going to be sitting higher than $9.50 um, coming into this earnings report. Frankly, I think it could easily run up over the next couple of weeks to around $12. Uh, people might think I'm crazy. Um, but just look at the run-up that happened into, um, you know, 6 uh, into June 14. I mean, look at that move over those 30 days. It is absolutely a huge move. And there's a lot of people still short the stock. Um, we'll go into that, but I think the stock's going to be somewhere between these two X's, the one in red, uh, and the one in yellow. Um, I frankly think the stock is going to be over 10 bucks now coming into earnings. I just, there's nothing in the options. You know, if you look at the puts, like there's nothing down here. Um, there's no action below eight. Um, there's nothing indicating uh, market makers plan to push the thing down. Um, if you look at maximum pain um, right now, it's at $8.39. And you see the stock um, closing after hours right now at $8.40. Um, so these market makers don't mess around with the SoFi stock. Uh, they control it to a very, very fine degree. Because again, there's just not enough institutional money in the stock um, pre-profit to counter what happens, you know, just in real life. It's like anything. If you sell something way too cheap, if you drive the price um, too far down, there's going to be those, you know, people at the courthouse auctions who are going to come in with capital and they're going to buy that asset for way less than it's worth. But the problem is, you know, they're able to manipulate retail investors to buy and sell when they, you know, when the market makers want them to rather than is actually prudent. You know, I'm, I'm trying to buy the stock down a near five bucks, maybe sell the stock at 12 or 25 or 50 or whatever the case may be. But, you know, a lot of people they're buying at, you know, nine 50, 10, even 12. And then, you know, the market makers are ringing them back out down at 720, 730. You know, they maybe lose anywhere from two to four dollars, um, you know, in the blink of an eye in a couple of weeks. And then the stock is coming back up. And yes, people are coming back in right now, but people sometimes want too much confirmation. And everyone, that's kind of, I think, where that narrative was saying, oh, it's going to six, just wait, it's going to go below seven. And that's why over the last, um, few days, the market makers, I think, have been able to accumulate shares um, at lows, preparing for whatever type of shenanigans they're going to do um, coming into the ER. Uh, just to um, take a quick look at the short, big increase over the last uh, seven days, only a moderate increase, 1% on the free float, but Utilization is up uh, 22%, days to cover up 13%, shares on loan up 11%, free percent of free, free float 
on loan is up. And you might think, hey, guys, they're covering today. The stock's up. No, wrong. Um, you know, it's only, there's not a lot going on. Borrowing and shorting was about equal. Uh, borrowing and returning, excuse me, about 675, 665. So no change on the day. But then, guys, why was cost to borrow up to 14.39%? There's not as many shares available as people think. Um, insiders don't have their shares up for sale. The institutions in the stock, the big ones, they don't have their shares up for sale. And more importantly, a lot of retail investors are simply not going to sell the stock anywhere below 10, anywhere below 12, anywhere below 15. There's, I think, hundreds of millions of shares locked up with people that are simply not planning on selling anytime soon. Now, yeah, if the stock ran to 20 or 25, something crazy happened, you know, of course, a lot of people would have to decide, you know, you have to take those gains and get out because, you know, for a stock to 2x and 3x, um, most of the time would take years, if not decades. Um, so in any case, guys, the short is, is what it is. Um, very, very significant, not saying it's going to be like a massive short squeeze or anything like that, but with, you know, a hundred million shares, um, borrowed, uh, it's could certainly create pressure nine best recent IPOs, um, 2023, uh, uh, evidently that features uh, SoFi. If you look at the actual news guys, um, very negative kind of right now, very negative, like sentiment. Um, I don't know what, uh, tip ranks has in terms of the, uh, new sentiment, but it's, uh, or excuse me, this is seeking alpha, but, um, it's just kind of, uh, turned very negative. If you look at the most recent Google articles, like SoFi stock faces challenges among, uh, better prey for a soft landing. If you're invested in SoFi stock, uh, SoFi stock still a good value up too much this year. Uh, geopolitical tensions could spark defensive investing. SoFi strategist, uh, that's just Liz Young, I think, talking. But um, up in pre-market trading, scores poorly long-term trading metrics. Should you hold SoFi technologies? Uh, three strikes and you're out. I want, that's where I promised you guys uh, something incredibly stupid. Um, and notice today, again, volume was low again, guys. So we had that one day, um, you know, 38 million or 37 million shares. And then, uh, it's been very low. So 17 and then into like 20 today. Um, but this article guys over on investor place, I did promise you something stupid. This is by Dana Blinkenhorn. Um, she is the Dana Blinkenhorn. Don't confuse her with the others. Uh, three strikes and you're out for SoFi stock. So SoFi seemed like a can't miss investment in 2021. It has missed because everything it did had a downside. It's still a long-term play, but I understand if you sell. Um, ooh, like many analysts, I have been high on SoFi Technologies stock since it came public. I even bought some. It's been a loser. Um, now for me, I've made a ton of money on it. You just, you know, you're just dumb. She probably bought it like 20 something. Here's the problem or Dana. I don't know. Dana could be a man, I guess. Um, God forbid, um, you're God forbid you're a man named Dana. Um, and no, I'm just joking. I'm, sh I'm sure there's many, uh, fine gentlemen out there named Dana. Here's the problem. SoFi isn't a tech stock. It's a fintech stock that uses technology to make loans and generate deposits. It doesn't have offices, but it's still a bank. Born as a fintech back when companies like Affirm were all the rage, had leverage, SoFi had advantage over other fintechs, resell its software to other banks, institutions, Galileo's API, Technicist banking software, aggressive, um, could, could, you know, basically sell that, make a whole new business on the tech side, which they're still trying to do. It faded. Um, SoFi bought a bank, started taking deposits. Money starts costing money. Banks should take profits, spread between what they pay and what they collect. Obviously, SoFi is doing that. They have great uh, spread, great margins between their deposit uh, interest payments and their loan uh, interest rates on those personal loans. Personal loans, you know, are like 14 to 25 percent, I think. Um, and they're only paying like four and a half percent. So you can see the spread there is, uh, very, very attractive. And, um, finally, SoFi has a high public profile saying CEO, Anthony Noto, getting its name on Los Angeles football stadium used by the Rams and chargers, bought the rights $32 million a year. Noto was formerly cheap uh, with the NFL. As we know why SoFi hasn't worked. There's problems with el every element. First fintechs are out, um, the cheap money using invest they don't need investor cash to grow they can grow with their own deposits uh, their deposits are increasing uh, incredibly rapidly i think as the next er will show quite frankly the only fintech still holding their own are payment processors like visa 
Um, I wouldn't really call Visa fintech. That's kind of weird. Um, so Visa's been around since I was born, I think. Second platforms are out. Um, Galileo and Technesis are not profit drivers. I don't think SoFi expected them to be profit drivers by now, but definitely next year uh, needs to show that. Um, finally, small banks are out. This is where it's just so stupid. SoFi had assets of $25 billion at the end of June. That's twice what it had at the same point in 2022. So doubled its assets um, in one year. Despite that growth, SoFi remains a small regional bank in size. The iShares Regional Bank ETF is down 48% over the last two years, close to SoFi's fall of 53%. Remember, two years ago, SoFi wasn't even a bank, so this doesn't even make any sense. It was just starting out, but... This is just so dumb. The problem, as we saw with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, this is where dumb and dumber, this is where it gets dumber. Um, we saw the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in March. That is when the price of money goes up. The value of notes meant to backstop that money goes down. Investors are afraid to invest in smaller banks, fearing they might go under. Um, SoFi does not have that um, bond exposure. Um, you know, they didn't put all their money into low interest bonds. They put their money into highly profitable loans. Um, so this is just absolutely stupid comparison. The bottom line, SoFi has three strikes against it. It should be out. I was wrong not to see this. My lame excuse is that everyone else was wrong too. Investors who followed me into SoFi have the right to be angry. I got into SoFi believing it to be a long-term bet on the automation of finance. It offered a way to collect deposits, make loans, and handle stock transactions at the lowest possible cost. I still see financial automation... Um, as a trend, I have, I haven't sold my SoFi, but I can understand if you do no sense in both of us losing more money. So weird. Um, I'm, I like SoFi I'm holding on to my SoFi. I'm not selling SoFi, but you should sell SoFi because I'm just going to hold into it for the pain. And because I made a bad decision, I made a bad call. I misled you. You guys dump here. Um, I'm going to hold long term for it. Just none of this makes any sense guys. Um, SoFi is increasing their top line. They're marching toward profitability, uh, meeting all their projections, exceeding their projections in uh, bank deposit growth, um, doing incredibly well there. But yeah, I don't know, guys. It just kind of makes me suspicious they're going to do something really weird. Um, I know it's going to be a dump and pump or a pump and dump, but we could see a double pump. We could see a pump and dump and pump. We could see a pump and dump and dump. We could see just a double dump. Um, we could see the double deuce like that bar in uh, Roadhouse. Uh, you just don't know what we're going to see, guys. But either way, there's going to be a dump involved. There's going to be a deuce. And there's probably going to be between two and three pumps. Um, you know, at least that's what your... Uh, no, I won't I won't use that joke about um, what your wife says about two pumps. But anyway, guys, um, I think she's talking about uh, choosing premium or regular unleaded. Certainly, this is a PG channel, PG-13 at worst, um, we're not monetized, so we can say whatever the fuck we want. Um, so it just doesn't really matter. I don't monetize this channel because I don't want you guys to have to watch a bunch of fucking annoying ads. And if you set your phone down, the ads just play forever. So I would rather my loss is your gain. You guys get to hear me unfiltered, uninterrupted. Oh boy. Um, Christmas come early for you turds. But anyway, guys, I just feel the media sentiment kind of turning. It was really, it was really, uh, you know, positive there for a while. Everybody was high on SoFi. And then all of a sudden it's kind of like pushing down and Bank of America's uh, price cut from 1150 to 10 while still, um, you know, they have a hold on the stock and 10 is a huge um, upside from $8 and 37 cents. But, um, you know, it's just turning like that's still a 20% upside from where we are right now. But um, everybody's amplifying that call. And obviously Bank of America being one of the biggest banks in the world and, you know, their call is going to hold more weight than, you know, if it's Piper Sandler or Wedbush or whatever. Um, it's just a big name. Like, you know, it's as big as analysts get at Bank of America, old Mahir. Um, he is uh, trying to kick us in the nuts, but he's not kicking us too hard. It's like, a, it's like a practice kick. You know, it's like one of those self-defense class kicks where you have that big suit on and he's kicking you right in the nuts. Um, anyway, guys, that's the SoFi stock. Uh, ticker symbol, of course, is SOFI. What's going to happen tomorrow? I have absolutely no idea, but I'm telling you, I think this stock could run up uh, dramatically in the next two and a half weeks. Uh, that's what the chart's saying to me. We have to break out here, guys. We have to break through um, this little channel that the stock is in. Just completely ignore this pump and dump. It doesn't mean anything. Um, 
the stock is about to challenge the 50 day moving average today and was rejected. Um, but I think that's just one pump guys. We're going to see a double pump. Remember, boom, boom, double up. Um, so, uh, remember double bubble that, um, you know, sort of knock off of like Mountain Dew. <laughs> I don't know if you guys bought that. We bought these like odd drinks when it was like our drink day at the, uh, you know, baseball game. My parents buy these like cheap, um, sort of off brand sodas, like, you know, cactus cooler or like uh, RC cola or, you know, uh, double bubble, um, just sort of weird things. Tahitian treat things, weird things they had at like 99 cent store. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> People seem to enjoy the exotic choices, not your usual uh, overpriced Capri Suns, those fancy rich parents brought. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Anyway, um, it's the SoFi stock. Ticker symbol is uh, SOFI. I can't see. Looks like they're probably going to hold the stock um, not much above 850, at least if the options are any indication um, coming into the end of this week. But I think next week we could see a really big move. We could see some covering. Um, the market's just not falling apart, guys. They're throwing everything they can at it, but it's not falling apart. It's holding on. And um, the options are not showing us that the stock is going to move uh, dramatically lower as many people thought it would. And um, the SoFi stock doesn't tend to just go sideways. Um, it led sideways and down for its three and a half months. And um, I'm looking for that 30-day uh, rapid increase that we've uh, seen uh, twice before in this uh you know, sort of four and a half uh, month uh, cycle that the stock has been in for low the last year. But we just have to see what happens, guys. I think that reversal pattern will hold up. And I think uh, we continue to go up. The chart looks extremely bullish to me. But then again, it always does because I'm always wearing my rose colored glasses, guys, or these are green, I guess. But it's in any case, guys, thanks for joining me. I know I'm rambling, but I always do. Um, that's why you guys love me. Hopefully you guys have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. We'll talk at you as soon as humanly possible. It's Un Poco Moss, where we give you not only something incredibly stupid, but also just a little bit more. My name's Danny Deals for Hurricane Lopez and Stock Karen. I'd like to say blah, 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 blah. Peace.